Welcome back to Tech Talks. I'm Chris Bormas, and I'm pleased to be with you today for part three of the hater bar system. So today we're going to talk about servicing older hater bar cases. There's a lot of them out there, and this is a question we receive on a regular basis, whether it's via live chat, phone calls, at conventions. How do I service this old hater bar case? Do I need to make a new denture? So we're going to talk about first making a new denture on an existing hater bar and also servicing hater bar cases when the bar has been in the mouth for so long, there's wear and you cannot get retention with the standard clips. First, when we talk about making a new denture on an existing hater bar, there's a few key steps. The first step from a clinical point of view is going to be blocking out the undercuts between the gingiva and the bottom of the bar. You don't want any impression material sneaking in underneath the bar and ripping, tearing, or distorting when the impression is taken. Going backwards a step, more importantly, before we're taking that impression, we want to make sure we don't put any clips on the bar. We don't put any impression copings on the bar. Now, why is that? Well, if we think about how a hater clip functions, it rotates and pivots around the bar. It's the same way a hater bar impression coping works, except now we have a lever arm. So we have this impression coping on the bar and it's going to move. Can we assure that it's going to be pulled in this parallel plane or it's going to be pulled at this angle? We're not working in a vacuum and what we've done is introduced a variable into the equation that we can't control. So we're going to keep it really simple today. No clips, no impression copings on the bar. We're going to block out the undercut and we're going to impress the bar itself. Now, if we're using a stock tray, a custom tray, that's all we need to do. If we're using the existing denture as our impression tray, we're going to leave the clips in the denture. We're not going to cut them out. We're not going to cut out the housings. The verticals established, the bites established. We don't want to have to reestablish that. So again, we're going to block out the undercuts and take an impression of the bar. The next step for the new denture is going to be measuring and cutting the length of the appropriate analog bar. The analog bar is available in two materials. There is the Delrin, which is easier to manipulate, especially if you have very few straight segments and the bar follows the curvature of the arch. You can easily adapt the Delrin bar by placing it in warm water and then placing it into your impression. Keep in mind that you do need the straight segments because without the straight segments, the hater clips cannot provide retention. The other material is the aluminum analog bar. It's sturdier. You can reuse it and it'll probably give you a more accurate representation of what's in the mouth. So we have our impression. We cut the analog bar down to the lengths of the bar segment or segments in the mouth. We snap these pieces into the impression or we snap them into the clips in the denture. If we use the existing denture as the impression tray, we pour up the master cast and we have an accurate representation of what's in the mouth. Now, if you choose to pour up this cast in stone without the analogs, you're running into the potential of having the cast fracture simply because the original hater bar was made with a one millimeter, very thin skirt segment. When you snap a bar under the stone duplication of the bar, there's a very good chance this will fracture. Again, the analogs are much more accurate and they're easier to work with and will give you a true representation that you can work off of. Once you have your master cast poured up, the existing protocol for making a new denture follows. The bite, making sure that you have the mold and shade of the new tooth, teeth approved, and then, of course, when we go to process in the laboratory, if this is going to be a tissue supported prosthesis, we are going to block out three tenths of a millimeter on the occlusal aspect of the bar, making sure to block out the implant bar screw holes, as well as any undercuts, especially in the labial vestibule when we're working in the lower arch. We don't want to create an undercut that creates an impossible path of insertion. So if we don't block out that labial vestibule, first we have to engage that undercut and then rotate the prosthesis back to engage the clips. This is a case where you can see the clips bending and folding because they're not designed to be rolled into place. It's a vertical placement when you're placing the clips, 
So make sure you block out that labial vestibule. When you're processing again, like we talked about in Tech Talk 1 and 2, make sure you're always using the green processing clips. They maintain that parallel position between all the clips and also provide the free space inside the process denture base that allows the clip to flex during insertion and removal. Again, without that flex, if there's acrylic around the flanges, the patient is going to be going to insert the prosthesis. Because that clip can't flex, it's going to be sitting on top of the bar. The patient's going to be upset, they're going to bite, the clips are going to bend and roll. So please use the green processing clips. And again, after processing, you can pull out, cut out the clips, and snap whatever retention of final hater clip you like into the metal housings. Thank you for joining us for Tech Talks by Preet. This concludes our three-part series on the Hater Bar system. Have a topic you'd like to submit? Email us at techtalks@preet.com. That's T-E-C-H-T-A-L-K-S at preet.com. Interested in learning more about the products you've seen here today? Visit us on the web at www.preet.com.